I'm Steve for This Week With Cards, and today I'd like to continue with my M109A3 Overland Camper build. I now have all the parts to put a water system in here, and I think that's the last item I need to get this vehicle classified as a motorhome in my state. If you remember from a previous video, I installed a sink in the top of this cabinet right here. I used a piece of the countertop that I cut out to use as a cutting board for the top of this. In the cabinet below, the sink currently drains into this bucket. For now, this vehicle is only going to have cold water. So I've connected both the hot and the cold input lines to the sink to this valve. I will supply water from my tank through a pump and then a filter into the back of this valve, which will supply the water to the sink. One nice thing that I noticed when I got this pump is that it will actually fit underneath my cabinet. So I can hide my pump, my filter, and a lot of my hoses underneath everything. Since I will be putting the pump below the cabinet, I need to get these drawers out. Now you can see how this is going to work. I've cut the bottom out of this cabinet. The pump can just sit down there beneath the drawers. I can hook up all my wiring and my hoses and everything can be hidden in there. And it's actually a pretty easy access. The drawers just lift up and come out in case I need to get in here and work on anything. I'm going to plumb everything with reinforced vinyl tubing. So before I install anything, I need to make some holes in the 4x4s that are underneath these cabinets to run my hoses through. Just need to clean up this mess and we can get installing. I could just mount my pump to the floor like this, but if I drill through this, you're going to see the other end of the screw on the outside of the truck and the wheel wells. So I've taken a couple pieces of scrap wood, made this thing that I can screw onto the side here, and I'll mount my pump to that. Now I can connect my hose that goes from the pump over to the sink. This vehicle is stored indoors, so I don't have to worry about the water freezing when it's stored, but I do use this for camping in the winter. So I've taken some fiberglass insulation, put it down underneath my hoses to give a little barrier between the outside world and my water. And hopefully this will keep any of my hoses from freezing. Once they exit this box, the water will be in the passenger area of the vehicle where it should be plenty warm and, and well above freezing. Now let's take a look at what I'm going to use for a water tank. On this side we have the tank fill. This is a vent port and this is one of the spots where we can draw water out of the tank. On the opposite side it has an alternative. For my application I'm going to use the ports that are on the single side. So I need to start by getting these plugs out. In my outlet, I'm going to put a hose barb. To this, I will connect the hose that goes to the water pump. I also need a hose barb up here on the vent port. On my water inlet, I will connect a hose to that. And that will go to the fill port. So this can be mounted on the exterior of the vehicle. You unscrew this cap, you can hook up a hose, and that will fill up the water tank. Also on this, it has a second port for the vent. So I'll run the hose for the inlet and also connect up the hose for the vent to this faceplate here. Here's what that will look like. I have the vent hooked up, I have the fill tube hooked up, and then you mount this on the outside of their truck. I'm going to mount this outside at a later date after I've tested everything and I'm sure I know where I want this to go. For now, I'm going to push the tank underneath the bed and hook up the supply to the pump. All of the plumbing is done now. The pump is hooked up. 
The tank is in place and I have some water in it to check for leaks. So now I need to run the 12 volt electrics to run the pump. And to do that, I'm going to cut the end off of this 12 volt extension cable and I'm going to supply power using a car adapter. This might seem like a really strange way to wire a water pump, but in a minute you will see why I am doing it this way. The reason I wired the pump with a 12 volt plug is because I have it plugged directly into my Blue Eddy device that I showed you in the last video. This means that I can turn the water pump on and off using Bluetooth on my phone. The pump is connected to the DC output on the Blue Eddy, so that means if I hit this button, it will turn on my water pump. Let's try it out. There, we can see it running. So far I don't see any leaks, but we should still have air in there because I haven't turned the sink on yet. So, let's turn the pump off. I have the sink on now. Let's hit the pump again and see if any water comes out. Oops, I forgot that I need to open the valve in here. Now the water should be turned on. Let's try this again. The sink is turned on. I'll turn the power on the Blue Eddy on. And there we go. Running water. And turn the pump off. Make sure that works. I don't see anything leaking. It's always a good idea to have a way to turn off your water pump. That way if you leave and something does get a leak, you haven't pumped all the water in your holding tank all over your motorhome. This little cubby will also double as a good place to keep all of my spare parts. Let's put the drawers back in and button this all up. Everything is back in place. Let's give it one last test. Looks like it's working. I have a link to all the products that I've used in this video in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.